Hello and welcome everybody. Give me just a moment while I make sure that our stream is working and everything is cool here. In the meantime, say hi in chat and maybe shout out where you're watching from. If you're just now tuning in. Alright, I think we are cool. I got the chat open, so if you say hi, I'll be able to see it. Cool! Well, if you're new around here, this is the Pixelogic ZBrush channel. And uh, click that follow or subscribe button if you haven't already, depending on where you're watching, I guess. Uh, if you guys want to check out some of my stuff, my name is Ben, or I go by Folygon around here. Uh, you guys can check out my YouTube channel. It's just YouTube slash Folygon. I released a new video today where I tried something that was very stressful, <laughs> but it was very fun. I did a 15-minute sculpting challenge where I attempted to sculpt uh, three different Pokemon that were suggested by you guys in 15 minutes each. It was a lot of fun, also very stressful. Check it out. Uh, and I'll be talking about this one here in just a moment. But if you guys are interested in my brushes, materials, etc., gumroad.com slash Folygon. And of course, there's a link somewhere up above to uh, my course, Appeal Academy. It's just appeal.academy in your browser. Check it out if you're interested in learning how to sculpt uh, some stylized and appealing characters. And uh, of course, for the uh, Pixelogic channel here, if you guys are interested in the broadcast calendar, just go to pixelogic.com slash ZBrush Live and you'll find that there. It looks like nobody else is streaming after me tonight, but Ashley uh, will be streaming tomorrow at about the same time as I am right now. Awesome. Well, like I said, uh, over on my YouTube channel, just released a new video today, but uh, last week I attempted to sculpt a Pokemon from memory, and it was Loudred, if you're familiar with that Pokemon. I, unfortunately, wasn't super familiar with it, uh, but I did remember which one it was. <laughs> Uh, I did not use any reference for it, and uh, this is how he turned out. Maybe you saw it as the uh, banner when you clicked on this video. I have a better render of this guy other than just the, uh, the ZBrush uh, sculpt here. <laughs> so he turned out really derpy and fun, but he was kind of in the correct vein. I have some, some reference images here imported. So I, my brain, my, my headspace was like in the correct direction, but not quite there. What's going on, Weapon of Destruction? How are you doing? And welcome. Uh, so we are going to be doing Loudred again, but this time using reference. We're going to start from scratch. That's what we're going to do on tonight's stream. Uh, that'll probably take up most of the two hours here tonight, but I have a feeling that we will also have some time for some questions along the way. So feel free to interrupt me as I'm sculpting. No need to uh, wait for me to get to a uh, a particular part if you want to ask a question just feel free to jump in at any point so with that all out of the way let's go ahead and get started here I'm going to start by just blocking out this dude's body basic shape here he's pretty rounded and luckily I found a back view of him as well and I don't know what his little tail hole thing is back there we'll get to that later but uh, this guy, this guy's my favorite, this one down here. I am uh, naming him after, like, Waluigi, so he's going to be Wa Loudred. I feel like it's only fitting. Look how smug he is. He's, it, this is probably my most useful reference for tonight. <laughs> All right, so uh, I don't think we'll do, like, a ton for the, um, the basic shape. We'll just kind of get that in there and uh, start to get all the rest of the parts and pieces in here as quickly as we can. Uh, like I said earlier, I just did this like 15 minute sculpting challenge where I did a bunch of uh, these Pokemon that you guys suggested and I only had 15 minutes to do each one. So I'm kind of in the, I'm like still in the headspace of trying to get all the stuff in here as quick as possible. Obviously, because I'm talking and streaming here, it's going to be a little bit slower, but I think we'll, uh, we'll kind of be able to move a little, little quick here and maybe get through this fast enough to have some time for some other demonstrations at the end. But we, we will see. We will see how that goes. Let's get a little leg bend in here. I'm going to keep these uh, kind of off uh, center. I'm not... I don't want to sculpt the legs in a neutral pose to where uh, I'm going to have to repose them later because I'm going to sculpt him in this pose eventually and break symmetry, but at least here, starting out, we'll, uh, we'll just kind of do it this way. 
So let's see, let's get these little, little, little feetsies down here. Andreas Walsh, welcome. How are you doing? Glad to have you here. I'm Loudred's agent. Thanks for the PR. Of course. All sorts of PR for Loudred over the past couple weeks over on my channel. Uh, hello from Brazil. Well, welcome, Beto. Glad to have you. Let's see here. I think these feet look like they're quite a bit more stretched. Looking at the bottom here, luckily we can see what that looks like. They're quite a bit more ovoid. So we'll just kind of leave that like so. His legs are a little bit long for, um, you know, what we have here, but we can fix that pretty quickly. Not super difficult. Again, I'm going to keep those very wide for now. Uh, next, let's do the arms really quick here. And I'm going to keep all this stuff separated until later on. Maybe even uh, until after posing, we shall see. I, uh, I pretty much always sculpt this way, a lot of different parts and pieces. Just find it easier to control my uh, primitives this way. And let's get our armies in the correct direction. Wow, that is beautiful. Really, really coming together quickly. <laughs> All right, I'll try not to noodle too much here. Let's get the forearm as well. I'm just going to flip that around. Thin it out and get it into position real quick here. Awesome. Easy enough. So his his forearms, they go from thin to thick. Just looking at this, they get thicker as they go out. And he doesn't really have hands, he just has fingers curled at the end of his arm there. His thick meaty claws. We'll just merge these together real quick. Do a super fast dynamesh. And a little trick here. I'm just going to slice this in half with my slice curve brush. Essentially what I'm doing is creating a polygroup separation so that when I Z remesh with keep groups turned on, this will uh, put a an edge loop right there, which is exactly what I wanted. I wanted it in that specific spot so that I can use that to my advantage to create an elbow here. Now with this more simplified geometry. And let's see, we'll grab the Z modeler brush. What I like to do in these situations is just delete a couple of edge loops to help simplify the shape. And then this one right here, I will bevel that edge loop. And I do that all with the Z modeler brush. If you guys are interested in learning more about the Z modeler brush, I have a great tutorial for it over on my YouTube channel. Uh, let's see, I always wanted to know when doing stylized characters, how do you keep the character smooth? Uh, when I make a low poly and then I bake onto it, I, I gotta polish and smooth all day to avoid weirdness. I think the ability to create clean, simple shapes that also, you know, still hold true to what you're trying to create and look appealing from all all uh, directions is something that's really tough. I, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't uh, look at it to be like, ah, oh, why can't I do this? It should be easy. It's not, it's, it's not easy. So don't feel bad uh, if you're struggling with it. It took me a long time to be able to uh, sculpt as clean as I can right now. What I recommend doing is uh, working with uh, primitives, kind of like what I'm doing and try to split up your shapes into more simple geometry. So during the block out phase, which is what we're in right now, I try to keep things as simple as I possibly can. So everything's pretty low poly. Typically the lower poly the shape, the easier it is to control and the uh, cleaner you'll be able to make that shape. That's kind of a good rule of thumb, I would say. It's not always the case, but uh, overall in general, with all that said, I think it's just something that comes with experience and uh, you know, there's not like one tool or anything that I use to create clean shapes. I pretty much, this whole time I've been using like the move brush. <laughs> so if that says anything, 
Uh, I don't think it does, but yeah, time. Time, a little practice. Use lots of different sub tools. Keep her clean. Take your time with it. Don't rush. And you will get there. All right, let's grab these little headphones. Oh, why is my, my sphere appears to be stretched? I don't want a stretched sphere. I'm just gonna append a sphere because it's being dumb. So what I'm going to do is flatten this sphere and then kind of like what I would do to model an eyeball, I'll do a similar thing, but I'm just gonna uh, depress it in instead of giving uh, the, the uh, lens shape. So instead of convex, it'll be concave. And the way we'll do that is probably just with a mask. So I'll just mask it off. Well, first let's squash it because it's obviously not that round in the back. So something like that. Squash it maybe about halfway. One, one problem with this sphere is that it has a pole at the top. So I'm going to zero mesh this just to get something that has a little bit better flow of topology. It's not not super clean, so let's, uh, the shape kind of got a little warped there. So I'm going to uh, do this. Just uh, give it a few more polys. Make sure it holds the shape. All right, and then, well, boom, let's do one of these. So I'm just kind of using my transpose line. You can do this with the 3D gizmo too. I like the transpose line though, a lot. Uh, I kind of lost the the rounded edge there on the end. See how skinny mine got? So that is unfortunate. I think I know a good way we can get that back though. So let me see if I can do that real quick here. I'm gonna duplicate you. Grab a curve brush. And whenever you have open geometry like this, you can draw out a curve brush and hold the shift key, and it'll draw all the way around the shape, just like that, which is pretty nifty. Look at that, it worked out pretty quick. So just hold the shift key while you're drawing out, or start drawing the shape, then hold the shift key, if you wanna be specific. There we go, all right. So we got that guy. Now we just gotta kinda blend that a little bit better. Let's increase the size here. Ooh. Try to line that up as best as I can. It doesn't have to be perfect. I will merge it all together and, and blend it all as one. Uh, but let's push this in. I have some poly groups that I set up just through masking. So this is all kind of done for me pretty easily and quickly. I'll just kind of push in here. Don't want it to go all the way through the other side. So I'll just do something like that. I think that'll work. And then um, I can either use separate geometry or I can just kind of poly paint on this. Either one would work fine. Uh, but for uh, rendering purposes later, uh, to make it easier on myself, I'll just use separate geometry. And I'll clean this up while we take a look at Chad. The concept of basic forms is too much and too cool to understand. It's the most correct way to create charismatic and simple characters. There are a lot of uh, kind of fundamental fundamentals to creating appealing shapes. So it's not just like, oh wow, spheres, they're like appealing by their own. There's like a lot of things that um, can make the interaction of of different shapes and relationship between other shapes uh, more appealing, uh, more visually interesting, right? It's kind of what we mean by appeal there. Uh, and you can learn all about those in my course. There's a link somewhere up here. It's just appeal.academy. But I also talk about them all the time here on the Pixelogic channel and over on my YouTube channel, YouTube slash Polygon. So hang out and uh, you're sure to pick up on a few along the way. So I think that feels pretty good in terms of that simple headphone. Headphone, what, what are those, uh, like the speaker drum? Is it the drum of the speaker? Is that what it's called? I don't know. 
I don't know what these things are called. All right, we'll come back to you. We got the uh, the basic shape here, so that's good. Let me just mirror that over to the other side. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, so proportionally, you know, we're not there, but that's okay. That's something that we can worry about later. His uh, his mouth takes up so much of of just him. <laughs> Uh, whoops, I need the body here. I'm trying to get the shape of the body here to be a little bit more correct. He's a little bit bottom heavy. He's also got this cool kind of a like volume icon on his back, which is pretty sweet. I didn't know about that until uh, until right before the stream because I was like, oh, you know what? I should try to find a back view of this dude. That would be pretty nice to have. <laughs> All right, let's, um, what's going on there? Let's scale that up just a little. All right, let's, uh, let's try to do this mouth now. For this mouth, I want to start by doing a Boolean operation. And we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to turn on live Boolean and just insert a sphere on this guy which we will then set to negative and start pushing in on the character. So you can see how that's, so here's our sphere right here. And I just have it set to negative, so it's kind of pushing in there. Uh, so let's try to line that up. Looks like the mouth is, I'm going for this pose here. So the mouth is going to um, be super, super duper wide, which is fine. We'll make it work. Ah, stop. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't know what happened to my music. Ah, we got an ad. Everybody go get a, a new razor. Friesland, what's up? I'm having trouble starting a character. I don't know where to find best tutorials for learning. I've spent some time in ZBrush, but my humanoid characters look terrible. Let me mute this really quick. It's really annoying. Um, well, there's a ton of awesome people here on the Pixel Logic channel that stream all the time, so you're in the right place. I have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash polygon. Tons of tutorials for absolute newbies. Uh, I personally recommend, because I uh, made it myself, go to gumroad.com slash polygon and check out this one, How to ZBrush, an absolute beginner's guide. It's essentially a quick start course to get you up and running in ZBrush as quick as possible. It comes with my brushes, my UI, uh, a bunch of other stuff, some free 3D models uh, included in there. Uh, a lot of value for, for the price. Definitely, definitely check it out as well as my YouTube channel. And then, like I said, there's a ton of people here that stream. I don't want to shout out any in particular uh, for fear of leaving out uh, everybody else. <laughs> Um, which artists do you have as a reference for creating your cartoon characters? Who have you studied and been studying to create your own characters? Uh, I, I pretty much just study 2D artists uh, for the work that I want to create. Uh, if you go over to my art station, which is just artstation and slash Folygon, I think. Artstation.com slash Folygon. Uh, all the, like for instance, this dude here, uh, who was it? Uh, Louis Gadea. Like I sculpted this based off of uh, Louis Gadea's concept. So uh, I studied this while sculpting it. I did like probably 10 minutes of drawovers first before I started sculpting, but I'm more uh, the type of person that kind of uh, learns as I go and try to create the forms as quick as possible. Same thing here. Uh, this character was uh, originally a 2D work by Gop Gap, etc, etc. You get the point. If you want to check out all the artists uh, that I have kind of uh, done some work from in the past, uh, definitely go check out my art station. All right, what are we doing here with this mouth? Uh, I think we're just going to leave, um, leave that how it is for now. I'm gonna put that all the way on the bottom so that the negative cuts through the arms as well. Uh, let's try to do that mouth shape, this, the lip. The lip thing. The weird, weird lip thing. So, I'm going to turn off uh, symmetry while I do this. This needs to be more square. 
Whenever I do curved tube stuff like this, I like to... Oh, that's gonna... That's fine. I'll fix it. Here, hold on. Whenever I do curved tube stuff, I like to uh, do it asymmetrically and then mirror it after I'm done. I just find it easier because curved brushes kind of freak out around the symmetrical plane. So I try to do it this way. I just find it to be a little bit easier. Mirror and weld. There we go. Now we got it. Uh, so what do we got going on? I'm going to turn off the arms here. The lip, from what I can tell, just based on the silhouette here, it's kind of curving and pushing back. That's a lot of like what this is, is like studying and learning how to understand silhouette. It's like most of what creating stylized characters is from 2D concepts. So I'll just kind of like get that basic shape there. And I'm not going to... Spend too much more time on that. All right, where is my negative sphere? Let's see, I want to widen this out. So I'm using this negative sphere. I'm just using my move brush and kind of like cutting in and subtracting more. So here's my sphere. I'm just using my move brush. You can't see the object I'm affecting because you can only see the effect of what it does. It's a little bit hard to wrap your brain around unless you're uh, used to working with booleans. I'm going to turn my music back on because we had some ads going for some reason before. Uh, let's see. Always start with Z-spheres. I think Z-spheres are a great way to work. It's just not for me. I'm not a, not a huge fan personally. Uh, absolutely, man. Happy to help. My pleasure. Chick-fil-A, my pleasure. All right, I'm gonna leave that for now. Let's continue to get more uh, parts and pieces in here. I'm going to subtract this geometry from uh, this piece here. Is this piece? I'm not sure why I just went a little German there. I'm just going to use a Dynamesh Boolean uh, because live Boolean takes time and yeah, that's just quicker. <laughs> uh, ooh, undo, please. Poly paint off. Dynamesh one more time. There we go. So I got uh, poly groups this time, and I, I want the poly groups. So Z, ZBrush can only remember one of two things when using uh, Dynamesh. It can only remember poly groups or poly paint. So I had to turn off the poly paint there to uh, get that to do what I wanted. And the reason I want poly groups is so that I can Z remesh with keep groups on at like 1K. I could go way less than that, but just to get something started here. Last question before I go to sleep. That is smart. Sleep sounds great. Um, are you able to tell me how many hours you have spent in 3D programs like Maya or ZBrush? No, unfortunately. Uh, that, that's a good question. That is a very good question, and I wish I could. Uh, I wish I knew how many hours, but it's a lot. It's a lot. Uh, typically people just ask, how long have you been sculpting? And uh, I think that's a bad question uh, for a number of reasons, but it, it's not really a good indicator of how long someone has you know, how much work someone has put into something. Uh, whereas what you just asked is a great indicator, but unfortunately I, I don't know how many hours exactly. I wish I did. I wish I had my little like Steam application number of hours playing ZBrush. <laughs> that would be amazing. Uh, but no, unfortunately, I don't know. And I apologize for that. I started sculpting, I, I think going on six years now. Going on six years now, I've been sculpting in ZBrush, and two, like a year or two into that, I started sculpting every day, and I've been doing that for at least the past four years professionally. So maybe that's a good indicator. Maybe. Our last remesh gave me a bunch of holes in my geometry, so I'm going to try again here. Have to leave right now? No problem. Have a great rest of your night. And welcome. Welcome everybody else watching. We got a bunch of people in here. Say hi. Let me know where you're watching from. 
feel free to say hi in chat. Don't be shy. I can't bite you through the internet. But if I saw you in person, it's a different story. If I saw you at the ZBrush Summit, which is coming up soon. Let's see. You know what? When is that? Is that the 20... Is that the 25th? Can't remember. I need to look at the dates. All right, let's kind of pull back on this shape a little. From Sheba's to ZBrush Live, how lovely. <laughs> That's a good transition, honestly. Yeah, or vice versa. I love me some Sheba's. I, I wish I had a Sheba. All right, uh, we need to get this boy just a little bit thicker here. What do we want to do next? Probably just get some of the uh, facial features in there so we have everything. Sound like a good plan? Obviously the arms poking through the mouth are not exactly what we want. Let's very quickly do the uh, mouth here. How do I want to do this? I'll probably just grab a quick little poly paint thing and uh, go. I'm going to turn on, oh, no, it's already on. I was going to say turn on back face masking so I don't paint through to the other side of my geometry, which is always annoying. I wish back face masking worked uh, just kind of by default with a lot of brushes. It's an awesome tool. I wish auto masking features worked with uh, Sculptress Pro because Sculptress Pro is a lot of fun and I've been using it a lot more recently, uh, but it doesn't work with auto masking, which makes me very sad because I like auto masking features a lot, specifically back face masking. Let's get our little hangy downy uvula thingy majigger. I think I made uh, made his mouth like a little too deep. Is that possible for this guy? <laughs> oh, having some trouble there. Yeah, it's just too high, so. Show you guys a little trick here that's really cool. Uh, scroll down in your tool menu down to masking. There it is. To masking, mask by color and just mask by hue in this case. And then I'll press Control W and that'll create a new poly group for that other color in there. So then I can just mask that off really quick. Easy peasy. Pretty nice. Uh, hello, I'm from El Salvador. Well, welcome. Welcome everybody from El Salvador. If there's anybody else here, welcome. Glad to have you here. What's going on in El Salvador? Watching from Canada. Awesome. Friendly Canadian neighbors. Hope you're doing well, man. Let's grab our hangy downy. Hangy downy is the anatomical term for this. Uvula is more so the colloquial. Uh, okay, I think for the, I'll probably just like paint this, right? I don't think it makes sense to, maybe I'll like inset it or something later. I'll just do something like that for now. Brr. Beautiful. How does this guy have any kind of, like, throat? Like, that's just the back of his head. <laughs> uh, the tongue, let's see the tongue. He's got a like cool and weird tongue shape. Oops. It's like a weird Weird thing. I don't know what you'd call that shape. <laughs> Weird kind of trapezoid. Kind of 
kind of like... Is it just... Is there something blocking it there? It looks more flat from some of these other angles. Hard for me to tell. So what's great about getting all the parts and pieces on your model really early is that it helps you to find out where you have proportional issues. Because proportions are exactly that. They're just the relationship between all your you know, shapes and it's good to get the color in there early because color has weight to it, it has value, and uh, it helps you to figure out all that good stuff really quick. So in this case, I can see that my tongue is kind of interpenetrating some of my geo over here. I need to do some stuff to uh, try correcting some of this. There we go. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, how's it going? It is going awesome. Thanks for asking. We're making some good progress here on Loud Boy. Hello all from Washington. Washington is not too far from me. I am in Cincinnati. So, you know, stone throw away. Maybe a really hard stone throw, but... Okay, let's get the, the little chompers, since we're on the lifts. Might as well. He's got some weird teeth. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you guys didn't see my, my version before, I didn't know what his teeth <laughs> looked like. If you guys didn't see the beginning of the stream, <laughs> you, you, you have no idea what's going on. Uh, so over on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash polygon, last week I did a sculpting Pokemon uh, video from memory. Uh, essentially, uh, a bunch of you guys suggested a ton of different Pokemon. I randomly generated one from the uh, list of, that you guys have given me. Loudrig came up. I was like, I kind of know what this guy looks like. I didn't look at any reference. I didn't look him up. I just had to try to sculpt it from memory. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I got pretty close, honestly, I think. Uh, for not knowing the Pokemon super well. Um, <laughs> it was a lot of fun. You guys should check it out if you haven't. He's a, he's a funny Pokemon. I like him a lot. Oops. And then just today I released uh, Attempting to Sculpt Pokemon in 15 minutes each, which was painful for my brain. <laughs> So if I were doing uh, a, like one of these for production, for like a toy or something, uh, it would probably take like around 40 hours from beginning to end to uh, create something that's like production ready. You know, going through revisions and everything else, just to get up to that quality standard that we would expect. I must not be signed in on Spotify. I keep getting ads. But, yes, we need to make our teeth more thin, more narrow. Uh, I'm also going to, like, bring out the lip further. This needs to be, like, more square. It's too rounded right now. It should be more squared off. Alright, and I'm just going to duplicate these teeth, plop them down here, and move on. So we got the gist down already uh, pretty well, which is good. That's how we like to start things off. Try to get as much of the like core character in there as quick as we can. And then from there, it just becomes revisions. Uh, let's get a little nose and some eyes on there next. 
For the nose, I'll just use our good old pal, the sphere. That I've been using for everything. <laughs> And I can blend that at the bottom. Let's see. And I'll just push that in on the bottom to make it a little bit easier to blend into the geometry later. I'll probably just dynamesh it together. Losing some volume down here. This is a really simple shape, but Sometimes the simple ones can be deceiving in terms of accuracy. Just because it's simple doesn't mean it's easy to get correct. And then the eyes are kind of uh, kind of flat, kind of just painted on. So I think I will probably just keep them flat, like what I'm seeing. Uh, but before I do that, we need to mess with uh, just the shape of this. We're kind of like losing the volume here which we don't want. We're losing the volume in a few areas here. Let's turn on perspective so it's a little easier to find those. Just using a quick clay stroke here or there, and then smoothing to add in some quick volume. I'm just doing this on a lower subdivision level so that I have a little bit more control and I think I want to bring everything in the mouth like more in. It feels uh, it feels like too hollow right now, way too hollow, I should say. He needs some more badonk, badonk in the trunk. All right, we can unmute this now. Uh, let's see here. I think he's still a little bit more thick down here. Hmm. How do I want to do your legs? How do I want to fix your legs, I should say? Set up some quick polygroups. Hmm. Some weird shapes going on here, for sure. I think I'll just dynamesh and inflate. Just trying to find the appropriate thickness. Triple C thickness, of course. All right, we're getting places. kind of sketch on those really fast to get them a little bit closer. It's okay if they're a little messy right now. We can clean them up later. Uh, and then let's increase the size of our feet quite a bit. So I have these out uh, really wide right now because he has them really wide for his, uh, his pose. So I don't really need them to be on the ground per se. So we're kind of gonna do them awkwardly here like he's doing the splits or something. <laughs> All right, uh, and then for the foot shape. It's kind of just a ovoid cylinder. happened over there. Sweet. Oh man, that sucks. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm gonna reuse the same trick. He doesn't really have knees. It's 
really hard for me to figure out what I want to do here. I think, I think I'm just going to do this. I think this makes the most sense based off what I'm seeing. And then what we'll do is we'll add a bunch of volume here. Kind of blend from that up into the body. Because based on what I'm seeing here from this silhouette curve, it's not rounding up like an egg. It's doing the inverse. So we just need to get that aligned properly. That means I got to blend between all these shapes, which is fine. I'm going to have to do that eventually anyway. I like how his claws on his toes are exactly the same as his teeth. <laughs> That's nice. Makes that easier for us. It's just funny. Could you imagine if your toenails looked like your teeth? Just get these into place real fast. Uh, we also want to get uh, some taper in these, which is really important. Uh, we have local sim on, so this should work fine. And with your transpose line or 3D gizmo, you can just control click and drag with the move function and it'll duplicate an object for you, which is pretty nice. I use that all the time. All right, we will fix uh, the feet later. Let's just get some more parts and pieces in here. The next thing I want to uh, do is work on the arms a little bit more and get those fingers in there. And if I can, let's try to work on this interaction so that the arm isn't poking through into our mouth anymore, which shouldn't be too hard. I'm going to do that kind of twofold here. Grab everything in the mouth and just kind of shrink it in. Nier, what's going on? Welcome. Welcome to the Pixelogic stream here. All right, shrinking that in. Need a little extra room for the arm. Beautiful. And that kind of broke some stuff, but that's OK. All right. We got a lot of the parts and pieces in here. Let's keep going. Like I said, we'll continue on with the arm up here. Gets a little bit more wide. Some cool taper happening there. One of those awesome fundamentals that we like to look for that makes our shapes more appealing is taper. That's definitely present in a lot of different spots on this guy. For instance, in the teeth and toenails, which I didn't do it to the teeth yet. I'll do that right now while we're on the subject. And I'll, of course, add some more form and soften these up a little bit later. But for now, we just want to keep the primitive. At least we got it correct. Awesome. All right, so a finger. This finger is not super complicated, but I'll probably poly model it 
just because I think it'll be a little bit easier. So we're going to use the Z Modeler brush. If you guys are unfamiliar with this tool, it's the Poly Modeling tool in ZBrush. A lot of awesome stuff that you can do with it. I am going to be using it to create a finger by, I'll just use the Q Mesh feature for now. A lot of different functionality here. I typically end up using Extrude a bit more because with Q Mesh you can actually delete polygons as well. Let's see. Okay, so we are going to make this the bottom of the finger. And we're just going to rotate up, mask that off, rotate back. And the polys are stretching quite a bit. That's okay, we'll fix that. So this will kind of be the knuckle back here. All right, so when we smooth that out, we start to get something very phallic. <laughs> uh, but we start to get pretty close to the right shape. We just need to make these uh, edges work a little bit in our favor, a little bit more in our favor. So let's start adding some bevels. So that starts to uh, get some nice creases in there. Let's do that out here to these edges as well. And hey, look at that, we're getting pretty close to our finger shape already. All right, so I will uh, soften this shape here in a moment, but let's, uh, let's get some like taper down here. I'm gonna pull that in. And along the knuckles here, let's kind of widen this out. And we'll widen this one out a bit more too. All right. So we need three of these. I think the uh, form needs to transition a little bit more quickly here. We can test that out really fast just by aligning it with one of these, one of our arms. So I am keeping the finger in the middle because it is on the central axis. So I can work on it symmetrically, which is very important. All right, so that would be in relation about that size right there. So we can grab our finger, get an idea of what that would look like. All right, I'm gonna subdivide our finger and then start to soften the form a little bit with my smooth brush. So I'm stepping uh, up and down through some subdivision levels to smooth some of that geometry out. I'm also going to use my pinch brush a little bit on this to crisp up certain parts. Uh, I guess I'm going to try to do Laurid as well to try to train some sculpting. Awesome. Ruckle back. Good luck. He's a fun one. He's a cool character. And hello. What's going on? Sorry. Didn't see your first message there. Welcome, welcome, as well as everybody else that is joining us. We're doing some Laurid. He's a real cutie. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's just like round out the tip of the finger just a little bit more. Geo is getting a little wonky. Just retop it super fast. Keep the rest of the shape. All right, now from here, we can delete that and get our finger into posiciones. Our super giant phallic finger. Get some rotation here. 
turn off everything but our arms. Just a little bit easier to uh, visually understand what's going on. Awesome. Okay. So that's in the correct position, just about. Uh, we're going to have to change the shape of our arm as well, but I think it's probably going to be easier to tell once I just get all three of these in. So let's just do some quick duplicating. So I'm just doing some duplications and rotations. Duplications and rotations. That sounds like the name of university course. Duplications and Rotations 101. Go away, Razors! <laughs> uh, this is super neat, I just don't think I have the patience for this. Sculpting is, uh, is a very Tedious work. Art in general is uh, is tedious. Uh, 3D much more so than than 2D for sure. Uh, it takes a, a long time to one just acquire the skills to be able to do it at a high enough level. But two, it, I mean, it, it just takes a long time in general. <laughs> it's just how sculpting goes. It's always been that way. All right. So I think we need to get a little bit more form back here. It looks like there's like this slight little transition there. So I'm going to get a hit in the forearm and probably end up smoothing that out there. And I think this is just a little bit more squared off from what I can tell. Whoops. Whoa. Come back. So I'll just kind of pull that out. Maybe just pump in some extra volume real fast. It looks like there's a bit of a harder transition if you look at that shadow. So that kind of tells me that this is a little bit tighter through here. So I'm going to pinch it up and uh, soften it a little bit later just to get it started. And the fingers are they're looking all right. They're kind of in the right position. Let's just see how they look proportionally with everything else. Let's make them a bit shorter up here at the top. Uh, to do that, let's come down here to peak groups. Let's up the poly count just a little bit. I do admire the work you all have to put into it. Uh, I don't know if I admire it. <laughs> I wish uh, I wish sculpting was faster. I I wish I did uh, more two D stuff. Honestly, it's just so much faster. I think we're in a pretty good place there. Uh, let's move on to some other areas and we'll come back and work on those uh, a little bit more later. But we can mirror those over to the other side. Whoops. Ooh, okay. Sorry, I had local symmetry on there so it um, freaked out. For a moment. All right, cool. 
Well, we're making some pretty good time here. I think we're 50 minutes in. Still got some good stuff here to do. But we're making good time. Making good time. All right. So next up, I want to fix some scale issues, I think. Let's head over to Transpose Master and try to do that. All right, real quick, Transpose Master, if you don't know, is a tool that allows you to manipulate all your sub-tools at the, uh, the same time. Very, very nice. If you've never played around with it before, highly encourage Highly encourage you to. It's awesome. I'm going to make these arms just a little bit larger. Oops. Maybe I just inflate these. I'm not a huge fan of inflate because it kind of rounds out a lot of your stuff. Yeah, I'll leave that alone for now. Let's get the uh, the toes. Scale that up, get that a little bit closer. Feet down here are ending up a little thick. This shape in general just needs to be, a lot of these shapes need to be worked on down here. That's okay. Uh, let's take a look here at the body. I'm gonna give him a bit more, bit more bean shape, a bit more volume up there. Just a little bit of taper up through there. Hmm, I think that feels a lot better to me, but there are still some other areas that need some correcting. We'll probably hop out of Transpose Master here in just a moment. We can do a few more of these quick quick fixes. That's what we'll call them. I'm just gonna keep those symmetrical, even though they look really awkward. It's just gonna be easier for me to create the pattern in there if they are aligned with the uh, x-axis there, or I'm sorry, the, the z-axis. All right, let's, uh, let's do this little speaker thing. I'm gonna use separate geometry for this so that it's easier to split when I do a quick render of this later on. Jeez, come on. There we go. I'm going to delete that one on the other side, make this a lot easier to work on. So because I remeshed this earlier and I just duplicated this, this is actually my geometry from the original piece, but I'm just going to repurpose it here as a simple extrusion. All right, so if I change the color there, we've already pretty much got it where we want it. I'm gonna extrude it ever so slightly. But first, let's delete some edge loops, clean up that shape. All right, extrude all polygons, one of my favorite operations. 
Beautiful. Um, let's do it the other way, though. I'll extrude in. But I think my normals are flipped, so we'll fix that. If you're using extrusions in ZBrush, you have to be, uh, be really careful that you don't flip your normals accidentally. It happens quite often to me. It's just kind of a toss-up to which way you end up extruding your geometry. All right, there's that. Mirror and weld. Beautiful. Just do the other one there, or even for this, I'm probably fine with just doing some quick poly paint. I like to have a really crisp, clean cutoff, like a nice separation between those. So I might change that later on. But for now, I think this is fine. Well, boom. All right. Oh, you know what? I forgot his little butthole tail on the back. <laughs> I don't know what this thing is, really quick. Look at this. What is that? It's got a hole in it. it... <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> but we're going to make it all the same. I like the pattern on his back, though. That's pretty cool. I think this is the shiny version over here, the purple one. I just grabbed the first sprite that I saw that showed off the, the back a little bit more. So you probably noticed that while I'm working, I'm just duplicating all these. I'm not really organizing or naming any of them. It's because at this stage, it doesn't really matter. The goal is to just get it done. I'm typically never worried about organization while I'm you know, working, other than just keeping things separated how I need them for sculpting. But you know, at the end of the process, you got plenty of time to go back through and rename some stuff and organize it. It's kind of a waste of time in ZBrush, in my opinion, to go through and name stuff. Unless you have, you know, hundred, hundreds of subtools where you can't just alt-click on something small and find, you have to find it in your subtool list. We have 16 subtools, we're, we're fine. <laughs> uh, Kuki, what's going on? Welcome. A headphone jack. Ooh, you might be right. That's a big headphone. Or it's a jack for something else. <laughs> you gotta you gotta get more loudrids somehow. Or uh, I think it's Wismer Wim Wimser Wismer is the the first version of this guy. Let's go with headphone jack. That sounds more. That sounds nicer. <laughs> I've been inflating this entire time using the transpose line. For those that don't know where it is, it's down in your deformation menu, deformation palette, inflate. And we will blend that into the butt a little bit later on. Uh, Scale-wise, though, it's just a little bit too small. We'll get that a little bit closer for our nefarious purposes here. <laughs> it also tells me that his butt needs to drop down a bit more in the back.
How do you expand that circular mask? Uh, I was probably just blurring the mask. Uh, I'm not entirely sure which part you're referring to, but that would be my guess. Kind of like what I just did there. You can uh, blur masks in the mask menu, uh, which is the proper way to do it. Uh, that will give you a true blur, I guess is what I would call it. Here. So like, here's my mask. You said, how did I expand it? Like this, like alt clicking or control clicking, sorry. Holding the control key, tapping on your model, clicking on your model, whatever you want to call it. It's how you blur a mask. That only blurs it one direction though. If you want to blur it both directions at the same time, like that, you have to use the blur mask option in the masking uh, menu. Undoing all that because it's messing with my undos. I don't want a billion undos on this. Uh, hey, Funligon, have you been streaming long? Just tried streaming, but PC couldn't handle it. Sad times. Oh no, that's unfortunate. Uh, yeah, I've been streaming for, for quite a while. Uh, I've been streaming with the Pixelogic channel here. So I stream on my own channel over on my YouTube. I have a Twitch channel as well. I don't really stream on it uh, uh, very often though. I, I used to stream on it quite a lot, but uh, I just got busy with other stuff. Stream on the YouTube channel still, uh, but I've been streaming for, for a number of years. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how many off the top of my head. At least a couple, at least, you no, know, at least like, at least a three, I would say, probably like three. But yes, I have a, a pretty beast of a machine. There's a ton of streamers here though on the Pixelogic channel. So this is, if you don't know, the Pixelogic ZBrush channel. Um, they essentially open up their channel for a ton of artists to, uh, to come and stream here. Uh, ZBrush artists, of course. This, this shape is, is not, not the shape that I want. Uh, still a little bit thick, but that's fine. All right, um, let me do another look at this guy's like, overall body shape. And the Lipperoonies. The lips are a little bit awkward. Uh, oh, you meant for today? No, I've been I've only been streaming for an hour today. And we have another hour here on the, the Pixo channel. No worries. Normally questions are typically on the larger scale of things, like how long have you been sculpting? Etc. Etc. So just for an hour here. We've got a lot of stuff down for just the past hour. Um, in terms of accuracy, we still got a little bit of a way to go, but we're getting there. I'm dipping into methodical folly. <laughs> the one that likes to take a very long time to sculpt shapes and clean them up and Get them perfect. Yesterday, it's quite quite different from yesterday because yesterday I was doing a 15 minute sculpting challenge where I was attempting to sculpt a few different Pokemon. You can check it out over on my YouTube channel, YouTube slash Folygon. 15 minute sculpting challenge. Here, well, as long as I it... attempted to shush, mute that. So I, <laughs> I tried to sculpt a bunch of different Pokemon in 15 minutes each. This is Glissopod. He was the first one, and uh, this like mentally broke me. <laughs> it was a lot of work to try to do in 15 minutes. I think we did Glissopod, Vulpix, and um, what's his name? Shuckle, <laughs> freaking Shuckle. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Uh, check it out if uh, if you're interested in in watching me mentally destroy myself. <laughs> it's 
spend far too long on a single area until you're happy with it, I do the exact same thing. There's a word for it, actually. It's called noodling. <laughs> Not exactly, but noodling is like the act of working on one area uh, for a very long time without really making uh, a ton of progress. You're just kind of going back and forth on, on a few different options. Or you're working on something for a long time without any force, like foreseeable changes. Like it's such a minuscule thing that you're trying to do, but not that big of a change. All right, I think I can do the eyes on this guy and uh, be relatively happy with uh, the shape of the body so it doesn't freak out later. So I think we'll try to do that next. Local symmetry is screwing my stuff up. Local symmetry is awesome for a lot of things, but when you have geometry crossing over the symmetry plane like I do, it will, um, here, I'll show you. It'll do this. See how the verts are turning into mush? It's bad. You don't want that. All right, for the eyes. Uh, probably just do a mask and then extrude the shape. I need more polys. Up that. Up that res. A little trick here, because we don't need really any anything. I'm just extruding from here. It's like one little area. Swoop. Just take all that. Now I can like super subdivide this. Do not try at home unless you have lots of RAM and stuff. <laughs> All right, here we go. Get a nice clean mask, or at least just a little bit more clean. Is that angle correct? I don't know. We'll fix it later. Just kind of fill that in real quick. Fix it from over here. So I'm right-handed, and I can't draw a curve very well the other way, but I'm going to try anyway. I just have to do it a lot slower. It's like against my natural wrist movement. Uh, are those in the right place? I don't know. Well, there we go. That's a little bit easier to see. Sure. I think the, uh, the head wraps back too fast. Uh, but we're going to stick with what we got, and hopefully I can fix all of it at the same time. We'll see. Uh, so a few things I'm going to do with this geometry, because this is 250,000 polygons right here, uh, just for these little pieces. First thing, edge loop. Sorry. Group loops, not edge loop. Group loops, and then... Z remesh with keep groups 1k should do the trick. We'll let that calculate for a second. Uh, hey, I have a problem saving my custom UI in ZBrush. When I open ZBrush, my custom UI is like half displayed and I have to reload every time to see it completely. Do you know anything about this? Thank you. Uh, I don't. I have had my fair share of uh, UI issues in the past myself, but uh, that one in particular does not ring a bell. If anybody else in chat has heard of that, though, or had a similar issue, I'm sure that they would gladly help you out. If not, you can post over on the uh, ZBrush forums or make an official ticket uh, if you feel like that is necessary. You can submit that to the support team. And that might be the way to go if you want to get down to the root of the problem. I should have just poly modeled these, um, but I wanted to kind of do it really quick. <laughs> Maybe this will work, we'll see. I just wanted to create like the basic shape. I think this will be fine. So I got something that I can like manipulate with my move brush.
This guy has a little bit of a better view of the eyes. They kind of like uh, kind of like italicized almost. And these ones have a black ring around them. That kind of does as well, but it's a little bit more obvious there. You can probably do that here. Brah. There you go. He's starting to come together. Let's get those little pupils on there too. Just insert a tiny black sphere up here. Give it a stretch. Wrong shape. How old was I when I started in 3D? I didn't uh, really get started in 3D until my early 20s. I didn't really get started into art at all until my like early 20s. So, not really the the type that like popped out of the womb with a paintbrush in my hand or anything like that. So, I haven't been sculpting all that long. I need more polys. <laughs> I'm giving. Sh I'm giving it all she's got, Captain. <laughs> uh, have you seen the Fusion Pokemon browser? I have, and I have sculpted some Pokemon fusions. Uh, pretty clever of getting key Pokemon aspects. Yes, it's pretty cool. I think it only does like first gen Pokemon. Uh, there might be one now that does some of the later ones. I'm not sure, but uh, I, I have done a few of them myself. They're pretty fun. I don't know if I have any online anywhere where you can see them. They're probably like on my Instagram. I think I might have one over here. Yeah. Vulpix, right? Vulpix plus Butterfree. Vulfree or Butter Butterpix. <laughs> Oh yeah, and I uh, I 3D printed a lot of these. Oh, you know what? I actually have it. What am I saying? Here. One sec. Check this. Wow. All right. Vulpix plus Butterfree, 3D print, full color sandstone. Um, yeah, pretty cool. I had a lot of fun making these. I have a bunch of these, not this one specifically, but a bunch of like little 3D prints back here on my desk. Um, where did we go? Boom, there we go. But yes, butter picks. I like Volfree more. Butter picks sounds like, like something that you would text someone that you don't want to receive. <laughs> Uh, thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. Like I said, it was a lot of fun to make those. There's a, I think there's a video somewhere on my YouTube channel of that process. I also go through that, uh, the, the 3D printing process as well. At least I should, if I'm remembering correctly, if that's the right video. Right, I need to get uh, some of this to be a little bit more accurate. So I think what I'm going to do uh, to make this easier to control, essentially what I always say is when in doubt, split it out. If you don't know what that means, essentially the idea is if you're having trouble creating a certain shape, uh, a certain way, you should split it up into multiple sub tools because then it's easier to uh, work with and manipulate. So that's what we're going to do here in just a moment with this little mouthpiece. And there's still a lot of other little things that we need to do, some big things as well, but we'll get to all of them in time. Uh, let's start right here. All right, so the first thing I wanna do, whoops. I'm 
I want to thin this out and get this to be a little bit more uniform in terms of thickness. Covering up everything I need it to here. Let's go for a bit more squared off as well. It's kind of got like the Gyarados mouth, actually. If you guys are familiar with Gyarados. We've got a little bit of that going on. And then what I'm going to do with this here is just take the thick pieces. Just take the triple C thick pieces here and reuse these for the corners. Uh, to close holes on those, I'll just dynamesh them. Pretty quick, easy way to do that. And yeah, let's manipulate these. Try to get a lot closer to the shape that we're looking for. And then we can blend these back in after we're finished. Pretty cool though. I pretty much sculpt this way for just about everything. They kind of look like they are cylindrical. It's kind of hard to get a read on these shapes. A little bit easier, like the top of that is what I'm confused by. Let's uh, let's inflate this a little. Maybe a little too much. That's fine. We'll make her work. We need more room. Open up that, I was gonna say schnoz. Schnoz is the nose. Is there a funny word for a mouth in the vein of schnoz? I don't know. Uh, then re-dynamesh. Yes, always dynamesh. Always z mesh and dynamesh. I'm always swapping back and forth depending on what I need. This shape getting a little bit too crazy down here, I think. It's a little bit okay because it's kind of the underside of the character and like the way light will hit that, like shadows and everything, isn't super important, but it bothers me. So if I can see it, I know other people can see it. Trying to get a little bit more depth here from the profile. Seven twenty. We got like forty minutes left here, so we can maybe skip some of the less important areas. These are like pulled pretty taut, so I gotta keep these nice and straight. If you want something to feel like it's tight, you gotta keep it straight. Oh, you're asking if I re dynamesh once I'm happy. Well, uh, to which part? Mix of gums and lips. Well, in this case, it's just going to be that piece of geometry here. I'm not going to blend, I'm not going to combine the uh, like off 
white yellowish color to the blue, that will remain a separate subtool until like for the whole thing. That will always be separate. It wouldn't hurt to combine it later on. Like it, if you were going to set this up for production, for like a toy, you would absolutely have to do that. You'd have to combine it, but right now it doesn't matter. And especially for a render, it's going to be a lot easier if it is separate, like a separate object. What is going on here? I can't like the geometry. I think I know what the problem is. This is like tucking in on itself. Oh, and I just need to widen it out. There we go. So what was happening was this surface here was like subducting up under that and then that looking really weird from the side created this really like awkward shadow there that I didn't like. Now just the click clacking of my keyboard. There we go. All right. So a little bit better there. I would like to get that black edge around the eyes. I could use a curve brush and just like draw a quick line around it, but there's actually a quicker and easier way to do it. Just duplicate really fast and uh, scale it up. Make it black, push it down and in. And we'll create like a little border there. We don't have a lot of time here left for being hyper specific, so we'll say that's good enough for now. Oh man, this this poly paint in the mouth keeps uh keeps freaking out on me. I'm not sure why it shouldn't be doing that. Very strange. Um, I think to maybe make that stop doing that, there's also these cool rings in his mouth. Uh, I am going to maybe make that like a separate thing in here real fast, just so we don't have to worry about that anymore. mind it being poly paint, but it's just, it's being done. It's being dumb. All right, so I'm insetting that ever so slightly. Come on, jeez. <laughs> I hate, I, I wanna be able to turn that feature off. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there's, um, there's this little feature with the select lasso that allows you to select edge loops it's cool that it exists, but I wish that I could turn it off like almost all the time. <laughs> Look at that. Now we don't have to worry about that being dumb anymore. Now it'll just stay the same. Yeah, my poly paint kept freaking out in there. It was very annoying.
<laughs> Bran Flakes, what's going on? Great name, by the way. Loudrid, yes, yes. Uh, let's see. Sorry, missed your question there, or missed a few, it looks like. Only have 15 minutes like my last video? No. No, I have a little bit longer. I have like 30 more minutes. That was... <laughs> that hurt my brain. <laughs> uh, I have a full character... Uh, full character modeled in 3DS Max, and in, a, in the future I would like to pose it. Uh, how do I do it without destroying too much of the model? Uh, so you'd want to probably... I guess it depends how your character is modeled. If it's animation-ready topology, you're going to uh, want to... Do I have a back face? No. Uh, you're going to want to set up skin weights, and I don't know how it works in Max, but in Maya, uh, which is uh, very, very nice at setting up uh, your rig uh, for animation, and it's amazing at animation. So I would assume it's pretty similar, but set up your skin weights and go from there. Uh, if you don't know what that means, it's probably like a good place to start. Start Googling skin weights, Maya rigging, or 3DS Max rigging, like whatever you're using. Uh, in terms of posing your model in ZBrush, uh, in ZBrush it would kind of be a one-time pose. Uh, so if that's like more what you want to do, uh, like you don't want to pose it multiple times or set up a rig for it, uh, it would make more sense to maybe do that in ZBrush, but you'd have to understand ZBrush and know how to of course, do some sculpting and stuff, because you're going to have to fix some things along the way. You're going to have to do the same thing with skin weighting, though. It's like, it's a lot, a lot of work. A lot of work no matter how you look at it, I guess. I am very quickly tightening some of these shapes up. We'll blend it later, don't worry. It won't look like that the whole time. I promise. All right. We're getting to a point where I'll merge those in in just a moment. Uh, you can use Z, Z Sphere as an rigging feature uh, with Transpose. Yeah, but you're going to still uh, mess up your model quite a bit. So unless your topology is like defined for it, you're still going to screw a lot of stuff up. So I uh, I don't actually recommend that people use Z-Sphere rigging unless they have an animation uh, ready model, animation ready topology. Other than that, I recommend Transpose Master, uh, which is what I always use for rigging. Uh, and if you're interested in learning more about that, I have a, uh, a tutorial over on my YouTube channel. Just go to my channel and click that little magnifying glass and type in transpose master or uh, rigging, or I'm sorry, um, posing, and you'll find some, some good tutorials on it. Can you tell us the render trick that you use in that video? <laughs> Uh, it's not really a trick, I just uh, very quickly rendered them in Blender. Uh, they took less time to render than uh, the uh, models took to make. Uh, like, so they took 15 minutes uh, to model, uh, even less to, uh, to render. They were a little bit higher res renders, so the actual rendering process took a little bit longer, but setting up the render uh, didn't take any time at all. Not really a trick, just Blender and used a lot of the default materials. Actually, only used the default material, just changed the color. Um, Three-point lighting setup, if you don't know what that is, I have another tutorial on my YouTube channel. I have a really quick GIF on my Instagram that uh, shows off, or I guess it's a video, it's technically a GIF, uh, that shows off like what three-point lighting is, if you don't know. But yeah, nothing too crazy. 
So to give the illusion of tautness, I'll make them a little bit more thin in the middle. And I feel like it's real thick down here at the bottom. It looks thicker in over there in general. Maybe I just thicken this up. And then start to like do some of that. Start to thin it out manually. All right, I am going to combine these back together. Uh, so at this point, he's he's losing a lot of his shape. Like he's, I know his arms are turned off, but like a lot of his shape on the side, he's he's sticking out too far. He needs to almost go straight back from here. Not quite, but more so than what I have. Maybe that's why the uh, turn into the lip was kind of freaking out there just a little bit. All right. Uh, back to the lips. Geometry is combined. Dynamesh, really quick. Combined. And now I'm just going to very quickly smooth that. Blah, blah, blah. Ziri mesh. Clean it up, and we'll be good. Uh, let's see. Trying to catch up on chat real fast. It looks like you printed them, the uh, the 15 minute Pokemon. These guys, yeah, they kind of have that uh, that quality to them. But like I said, it's just kind of the default <laughs> default material in uh, in Blender, and then just like a really simple three point lighting studio setup. Uh, it takes like minutes to set one of those up it's it's not complicated just look up three-point lighting and uh you'll you'll get a bunch of images i think you'll understand it pretty quick it's not like a super complicated concept uh so he uh he's still kind of like misshaped in quite a few areas like in the main body uh, so if we want that to be really good, uh, really close to the original, it'll take a little bit more time to do that. A little bit more time than what we have uh, for this. But you know, like he's he's on character for sure. There's just like more things that we can do to get him perfect. And I like to make things perfect. <laughs> so the objective here was, uh, if you guys are just joining us a little bit later in the stream and didn't see the the beginning. Uh, I forgot about this guy looking so smug down here. <laughs> he looks so stupid. So, uh, sorry to the artist who ever made this. I don't. I, I'm not offending you. I'm not trying to offend you. But he does look stupid. <laughs> uh, last week, I released a video on my YouTube channel, trying to sculpt uh, a Pokemon from memory, and you guys gave me a bunch of suggestions, and I ended up uh, randomly choosing one, and it was Loudred, <laughs> the guy that we're working on right now. And uh, <laughs> I should put this guy up in the corner. Uh, this is what I ended up creating. So this was without reference, without looking the character up from memory. Uh, I had an idea of what he looked like. I vaguely remembered. And this monstrosity is what I created. Uh, the video's <laughs> really funny if you want to go check it out. Now we're much closer, much more on character. But this guy holds a, a special place in my heart. He's very nice. He should be somewhere in line with this guy down here. This is a uh, Wa Loudred. It's Waluigi style, I guess. He was a lot of fun though. All right. Uh, what what is uh, kind of most important here? We have 25 minutes. 
I think the most important thing is going to be uh, starting to combine some of this stuff. For instance, uh, this leg nub into the body as well as the nose and to start blending that. I want to pull the face more forward on the corners of the eyes because they're like drifting back too fast comparative to what I'm seeing in there. So let's do all of that next. So we got the bod, that sexy jelly bean bod. Merge down on that. And the nose, we'll do the same thing. Merge down on the nose. And I want the uh, tail plug. I'm gonna call it a plug. because Somebody said they think it's a headphone jack. And that just sounds a lot more wholesome than what it looks like. <laughs> so we're gonna stick with that. Uh, do we wanna combine anything else? I think not. I'm not going to merge the arms until uh, later, probably until posing. Same thing with the uh, ears. All right. Burring, boring, burring, burring, boring uh, merge time. So time to do some technical stuff here just to get this cleaned up. A little bit of like sculptural work, but for the most part, pretty boring in my opinion. These like little pig noses can be a little tough sometimes. So what I like to do is essentially just give a little bit of room back behind it. And I'm doing that with a mask here. So I'm just kind of pulling that geometry down. So it's got like a little bit of a ridge to it. So when I combine this and start to smooth that out, it should blend a lot better. Same thing with the bottom there. Let's just go ahead and merge all this with Dynamesh. Should be fine. And I will clean this up just a little bit here with my trim brush. It's kind of blending between these two surfaces. A little bit of smooth as well. And I'll save that. I want to keep the harder edge there. Z Remesher will pay a little bit better attention to that. Just kind of clean that up a little bit. These are going to be blended a lot more. His legs look so much different here in this image. Now I'm kind of regretting merging those together. There's a very clean separation there. Oh well, we'll figure it out. Not a huge deal. Nothing we can't salvage later. I'll leave it how it is for now. Let's, uh, let's clean this up. Like I said, boring stuff now. Oh, wait, I need that on. All right, Z Remesh. We'll do like 5K. Try to get something useful out of this. Eduardo, hello, welcome. Danny, what's going on, man? Welcome. You look older with a beard. That's the idea. <laughs> um... You hurt my feelings with your brutal cold shoulder. What cold shoulder are we talking about? I'm sorry, I was doing very important Laudrid sculpting here. Got some exploded mesh up in the schnoz. I think we can fix that though. Quick little soften here. And 5K should be plenty. I don't know why it's being dumb. I'll try it one more time. Thank you for the advice, of course, man. Always happy to help. All right, there we go. It didn't explode that time. No idea what was happening. All right. We'll close holes just to make sure we're good. Do a couple projections on our bod, our very sexy bod here. Did that not project last time? Did I close that on accident? What just happened? 
I duplicated it. I am very, very dumb. All right. There we go. Fix that up. Probably do like one more projection. Let me see what this looks like up here. I think we are good in terms of detail. <laughs> All right. So we're at the 20 minute mark. We got 20 minutes left. We've been going for a little over an hour and a half here. So we've made some good progress on this guy, I think. We can continue cleaning this up a little bit more. Now, I don't want to uh, sculpt his legs kind of in a neutral pose. I want the legs to be splayed out because if I'm going to twist him and put him in this pose, uh, that will help that foot to be like more flat on the ground and I won't have to re-sculpt a lot of this later on. So it's going to look more awkward in the, uh, the neutral here than it will in the final uh, pose, but at least we've got the, the main parts of the character down here. He's looking pretty fun. A little bit better than this one, right? <laughs> The beard is sexy. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. That wasn't my intention, but nice sculpt. Well, thank you, man. It's very kind of you. All right. He's getting there. I don't know if I'd call him nice quite yet, but he's on his way. He's going places. All right. Let's uh, let's just blend this leg into the body. It's got like a hard uh, cutoff there in that 3D model. Uh, but I kind of like the softer blend that I'm seeing going on with the uh, 2D concept. I'd like to capture that a little bit more if I can. We'll kind of blend that out. Pay no attention to the butt plug back here, which is technically what that is. <laughs> All right. Let's line up these feet a little bit more. And I think I'm gonna do the same thing that I wanna do up here with the teeth because I haven't done it yet. Let's just merge these together. And essentially what I wanna do, let's just soften the shape a little bit. And because I have creased geometry there and just the way the polys are set up, they're freaking out a little bit. So I'm actually going to Dynamesh the nice clean geometry I have. I know, crazy, right? But from that, I'll be able to soften the shape a little bit more uniformly, even though the geometry isn't quite as clean, which honestly, I don't really care about too much. That's kind of naturally giving them a little bit of that inset that I'm seeing there. So I'm actually kind of happy with the way that ended up working out. But just to do it a little bit more, let's we'll use our move brush. Try to get that the right size. Just kind of push in on that a little bit. Do the same thing up here. And I'll do the same thing with the toes. And that might be a little bit too much, but that's okay. I can maybe change that later. All right, I'm going to T-pose this guy, uh, realign his feet, and hopefully fix a couple more things along the way. It's mainly the feet, as well as the shape of the head up there. I would like to pull forward on the corners right here. Ah. See if we can do that without screwing up everything else. I'm just going to use a really large move brush. Try to slide that forward a little bit more. Maybe, maybe push back here. That might help too. I'm just trying to flatten the front of his face a little bit more because it's just so rounded. I think that feels a lot better to me for now, so we'll just keep him like that. And let's fix his feet. So that's kind of the main reason we came here. A 
You can do some pinching to, ooh, did we not have symmetry on there? That sucks. That is unfortunate, but that's okay. They were pretty quick changes. So whenever you hop into Transpose Master, you have to make sure that you turn on symmetry. Or else you have to redo everything. As long as your model's symmetrical. Alright, so some quick fixes there. Just trying to flatten that face ever so slightly. And back to the feet. Alright. Come on, give me the geo. <laughs> Again, wish I could turn off that feature. All right, we will tighten up his knees a little bit later, with like a pinch brush or something. Uh, while we're here though, let's turn on perspective, just kinda give this guy a once over. The move brush. Just kind of looking at the silhouette here. I think he's maybe a little bit too deep according to this concept. This maybe not so much. So let's um, let's try to make him just a little bit more shallow. I think. Definitely got some taper going on. I don't want to completely break that. So it's really nice. His feet are a little bit too uh, <laughs> misshapen. I think we can do that outside of Transpose Master. Uh, is there anything I want to do here before we jump out of Transpose Master? I don't think there is. Maybe just move these teeth a little. Can do these outside of T pose though. All right, T pose and back. Fix that face. Fix them feet. And I think we'll be in a good place. It's getting awful dark in here. I need to turn on an extra light. All right, so one of the things we just ended up doing before that was blending out this nose, which you can do a little bit better here. Fix up the money maker. And I think it's uh, still a little bit too hard of a transition. So I think we'll just do like a general, general smooth there. And I think that'll work. If anything, I don't really think we need to do nostrils. I think we can just like get away with a quick little, ah, uh, you know what? Maybe we should, maybe we should sculpt them because our poly count is a little bit too low there. I think that'll work for now though. We can maybe adjust that later. All right, down here in the legs, I wanted to use a pinch brush down here. Just tighten up the transition for the knee area. It's still gonna be pretty soft, pretty smooth between the two. Got some interesting legs. Got some interesting shapes in general. All right, and then for the foot, how do I want to do this? I probably will just use my transpose line as a trim and clip that. Which, if you don't know how to do, you can do that with the move function and just click your first little circle. It'll clip perpendicular to the uh, transpose line there. All right. 
Trying to line these up a little better. I think that feels a little bit better to me. Grab our toes, our toe teeth. Why they are exactly the same as the teeth, I have no clue. I'm going to make the t uh, the foot like a little bit uh, thicker here, based on what I'm seeing in the concept. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did to the teeth down here. are nearing the end of our time. So I'm trying to get done with as much of the messy stuff as, uh, as I can right here at the end. So if you guys have any questions though, now would be the time to get them in. Because I am more than willing to focus on your questions rather than this guy with what time we have left. And that's the entire the reason I am here streaming, so feel free to question away. All right, uh, the other thing I wanted to do was clean up <laughs> a lot of this. Uh, this shape is still a little grody through here. Clean that up. Beautiful. Beautiful. A, li a little flat in some areas, but that's okay. I won't mess with that too much anymore. I still need to merge those fingers uh, down into the, uh, <laughs> the weird hand here. I haven't really touched these in a minute. Chris, what's going on? Welcome back. How are you doing? It's been a while. Hope you are doing well, man. All right, so I got the uh, hit on the outside there. We'll soften those transitions a little. I think the fingers just need to be a bit thicker, like towards the top. They just have like more taper going on. Maybe not thick, but wide. They're very uniform right now, so maybe we can do a little bit of some asim, just a little. And I, I'm a little hesitant to merge these together. I would like to do that to blend them, but then I'm going to kind of finalize my shape there. So there are a couple things I could do. One thing I could do is rotate these up and out merge them together and then rotate them back in so that that geometry was connected. That's probably what I'll end up doing. That will take uh, a little bit too long though, so I am not going to uh, do that right now. We're gonna hold off. We'll do that. I'll probably do that off stream or maybe during the next one as like a little technical demo. <laughs> uh, doing okay, don't seem to get notifications anymore. Oh no. Well, I'm not sure why that would be. I don't really stream on Twitch too often anymore. I don't really stream on my channel. I stream over on my YouTube channel occasionally, uh, which is just YouTube slash Polygon, but I don't stream on my Twitch channel anymore. Uh, just wanted to kind of keep everything in one place. I think that made a little bit more sense. So I'll still be doing some more streams over on the YouTubes. So maybe swing by there. In terms of the Pixelogic channel, though, I'm not I'm not sure how they have that set up. Uh, let's see here. Merge you down. Unmute music because the ad went away. 
and I want to combine these. So here at the end, I'm trying to uh, combine and clean up a lot of different things. Uh, that should be good enough. We'll try that. So I'm just trying to get things a little bit more polished here at the end. We're not going to have enough time to pose him because we only have about five minutes left. So I'm just trying to clean up what I can. Fix what we have instead of try to create more problems. Kind of soften the, ooh, we got an arm poking through. That's nice. Soften this transition. For those that are kind of just joining us here at the end and have no idea what the hell this monstrosity is in the top right. <laughs> I did a video last week on my YouTube channel where I attempted to sculpt this very Pokemon uh, from memory. Uh, you guys gave me a ton of awesome suggestions, but um, he was <laughs> he was the one that I rolled the dice on, so to speak. It, um, luckily I knew him a little bit, like I knew who he was, I just, I, I know the first gen really well, I think this, I think Loudred is third gen, maybe somebody can correct me on that if I'm wrong, I know the third gen like a little bit, but, uh, anything past that, I am, uh, pretty much clueless on, so like, I just did the sculpting, uh, Pokemon, sculpting characters, right, in 15 minutes, like a 15 minute challenge, and one of them was Galissopod, which is like this insect-like Pokemon. This uh, this one here on the right of this thumbnail, he's really small, sorry. But um, <laughs> I had no idea who he was. I thought he was like this little green ball, which is Galupin or Glupin or something. I, I can't remember his name. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> that's what this is. Him from memory without looking up any reference or, or anything else. It was a lot of fun, though. I enjoyed it. I can't speak for, for the video, though. <laughs> I was, like, all over the place just trying to figure out who I was even trying to create. All right. We're going to make that a little bit more concave. We are going to soften the bottom of our foot. Sure. Good enough for now. I'll mess with that more later. I can probably taper that transition into the foot uh, quite a bit more. We'll definitely work on a lot of these transitions a bit more, either in a future stream or I'll just do it off stream and maybe uh, post it on YouTube. We will have to see how it goes. But I think that's where we're going to have to cut it unless anybody else has any last minute questions here that we can answer before we head out. What's going on, Kyle? <laughs> Stream to both. So unfortunately, uh, my Twitch channel, because I'm a Twitch uh, affiliate, I, it doesn't allow you to do uh, multi-streaming. Or at least that's what I have found uh, with, what's it called, Restream. Uh, I use Streamlabs OBS, yes. I'm not sure if you can multi-stream directly from Streamlabs OBS, but uh, that would be that would be awesome. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate it. It's very kind of you. Yeah. Yeah, so unfortunately, the multi-stream thing doesn't doesn't work out for me too well. But YouTube, it's where everything is. Like I said, it's just YouTube slash Folygon. Uh, again, if you guys are new here, sorry this is like so bright on my face and it's pretty dark in this room, uh, but definitely click follow or subscribe on the Pixelogic Zebra channel here if it's your first time hanging out. 
And uh, if you guys want to check out the broadcast calendar on Pixelogic.com, you can see who's coming up next in the future. Ashley streaming tomorrow at the same time I did today. And then uh, Matt Thorup, Redbeard, is going on later, uh, later on after her. Uh, if you guys want to check out more of my stuff, again, the YouTube channel, gumroad.com slash polygon, or my appeal.academy course. Appeal.academy is the URL for that. Learn how to sculpt appealing characters and such, like our beautiful Loudred. This one right here. Look how cute he is. He is perfect in every way. Or maybe this guy. Maybe this guy down here. This is this is Loudred. He's like Waluigi, but the Loudred version. <laughs> All right. Uh, any last second questions? I do not see any. All right. That is going to be the end then. I will see you guys next Tuesday, uh, same time, same place. Come and hang out if you are available. And uh, until then, you guys have a great rest of your night. See ya.